deseo sabes que no es Te doy el desquite Que me quites Todas esas ganas que te tengo muerto Todo el mundo sabe que tú y yo Somos más que pana Pero nos vamos lento Que el que se apura No llega a nada No llega a nada no, nada Y me encanta Yo lo sé Independiente Estoy contigo yeah. Y porque la pasamos genial Es un castigo yeah. Es solo que conmigo Encontraste tu abrigo yeah. Y por ahí encontraste algo más Tú lo sabes No nos desviemos del caso Solo tú y yo mujer yeah. Tú eres perfecta, tú eres mi caro Y yo puedo ser tu nena Sé que tú quieres más de eso Beso. La que tira me ese hueso Beso. Que él no te dio lo que te di Y no solo hablo del sexo Lo que yo te di Baby, te quiero para mí
Get those likes up. Come on. Come on now. Give me my likes. Give me my likes. Get them up now.
What's going on? What's going on? We're back. Shout out to the CIA. All you confident, intelligent, and certain men out there. One love to the FBI. Women and beautiful, inspirational women out there. Skyfather back in the house. Candle of the night. The harmonies. Golden wood. That circular window. Fragrance of the day. One I've been looking for for a minute. Cartier Wood Amber. This thing should come with birth control. Don't wear this around your girlfriend, your wife, your significant other, unless y'all are trying to uh, make a baby. Because uh, babies will be made with this one. One of the rarest, most difficult fragrances to get a hold of in the world. And it's in my hands. Oh. Thank you, Cartier. What's going on, people? We're getting back in. Oh, look at that. They gave me a traveler of the deluxe super special oud absolute guitar and i love shout out for this kind of stuff put your name put your age your city and your gender in the chat room come on Get you trying to get in trouble. So tell your So your godfather's back in the house. In the house is his axe. What are we doing tonight? We're going to discuss a very pointed topic. Uh, I want everybody to be respectful, keep it cool, keep it classy. We're not trying to get ignorant. But uh, yeah. Shout out to Michelle St. Pierre. I ran into your husband. I want to keep saying that until I get you in the chat room saying, I saw you. Brother came all the way across the street and said, hey, man, you're my wife's internet boyfriend. I'm like, nah, man, that's your job. I just inspire it to be better for you. What's going on? What's going on? What is going on? Shout out to the CIA. One love, FBI. You want to smell that amber? Ooh, watch out, girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, you're kind of bad. All right, so welcome. To those of you who don't know, my name is Kevin Samuels. I'm a professional men and corporate image consultant. My job is to make my clients look good, smell great, and be their best each and every day. Uh, I have a long and illustrious career in corporate America. I spent 20 years in corporate business-to-business -business sales and telecommunications until that industry fell apart i.e. WorldCom, all the telecommunications, blah, 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 blah. So it's a little bit in office products and then in advertising. Why is all that important? Well, because I've in these streets is where I made my bones here in Manhattan. Little guy from Oklahoma, via Dallas, came up here and kicked people's ass. 
why does that mean? Why does that matter? Because I think it matters uh, when you know who you're talking to. And I will tell you that when I came to New York City is when I first saw real success. I mean, I saw success, you know, in Dallas and Houston. Don't get me wrong. But when I came to Manhattan is when I saw that a million dollars was just getting started. You know, in Oklahoma, when you know, back then, if you was making 50000 you were rich. Here, that was a paycheck for some people. Why is that important? Because tonight's subject is going to be a pointed discussion. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Should high-value men marry out? Should high-value or competitive men marry out? And ladies, I'm going to throw you in there too. But why am I talking to the high-value men tonight? Because I need you ladies to understand, these are the men you want. See, we can talk about the Dusties, the Crusties, the Beta Male Coons, and all that other. These are the men you want. And my question is this, should they, should they marry out? Now, funny, I've heard this being kind of discussed a little bit on other platforms to a lesser degree, talking about everybody. And, and most of what I've heard is, even in the chat room, is I kind of saw it coming up. People were more or less saying that you should not, even if you're competitive or high value, you should still wait and marry within your group or the race. And my question is this, if you have done what it takes to be, make yourself high value, or if you are competitive, and let's define competitive. I consider a competitive man in the top 20% of men. The top 20% of men, that puts it around $70,000 a year. I consider that to be a financially competitive man. Top 20 to the top 15%. 20, that's seventy dollars to $85,000. Anything above that puts you in the in striking range of high value. I consider you to be financially attractive if you're making $70,000 or more living in Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio. Where the cost of living buys a dollar will buy a dollar. In New York City, you need to adjust that up to about 150. In the Bay Area, likewise. So, if you're a man who's financially attractive, you have a career of which you can explain in less than 20 seconds. District manager for Verizon or whatever. Or you own your own plumbing business. Whatever. You have an income that's consistent you are in reasonable shape I consider you to be competitive and you're heterosexual I consider you to be competitive anything on top of that is just a perk I don't care how tall you are men like this tend to have been married the older they get or have children the older they get but we're talking about men across the board. My hit squad guys, my guys from 18 to 30, can also fit into this group. High earners in training. Or Henry's in training. High earners not rich yet in training. Hit squad. Henry's. All these guys are Henry's. High or higher earners. High earners not rich yet. Just a second. Why, why is this important? Is that music? I want to see if that music is loud, first of all. Excuse me. Oh, it stops. Oh, why is all this important? Because let's get to the bottom of it, ladies. These are the men that you want. And a man does not have to be fine. That's your job. A man just has to be in shape. Fit for life, an athlete for work. And the question is, a man that's actually done these things, who's got himself an education, a trade or a profession, is earning more, you know, is earning more than most people. Is earning twice what a middle class family makes in this country. The middle class family in this country makes around eighty to forty two thousand dollars a year. So if a man is making twice what a middle class family makes, I would consider him to be successful and successful makes you competitive and for the longest we've talked about the lack of competitive men 
the lack of competitive men. That's why this whole high value thing came along and people just kind of thumb their nose at it because they're talking about that they're no competitive men, much less high value. And successful makes you competitive. And for the longest we've talked about well, that's bullshit. The stats are in, the facts are in, the statistics are in, and there are there are competitive men out here and high value men out here. The question is, if these men exist, which they do, should they marry out? Well, the question is, well, why should they marry out, Kevin? Glad you asked. Well, one in four black women will marry in their lifetime. And what I realized and what I've learned over months and months and months of talking to men and women that women have often ran across men in their in their youth that they have just bypassed waiting opting to stay on the train opting to enjoy their 20s not worried about marriage let's get right into it this is about black folk and if a black man is competitive and successful on his way to becoming high value Definitely Henry. Why should he wait? I'm asking you ladies. Why should he wait for women from 18 to 27 who never were really interested in marriage until, you know, later on in life? When do a lot of women start getting interested in marriage? When do a lot of women start getting interested in marriage, guys? When do a lot of women start getting interested in marriage? Danger zone. They start getting interested in marriage when they get that danger zone. Let's turn this music off. I don't like this music playing low. We'll figure this out later. A lot of women start getting interested in marriage when they hit the danger zone. Danger zone is at 27 to 35 years old. To where it's like, uh-oh, there are not as many clubs to go to. You're the old chick in the club now. You know, at 25, you're your hottest. You're two years past. Okay, guys, we need to get the likes up because, you know, we don't have these likes up. Come on, man. 138. We got 651 likes and almost 2,000 people in here. All right. Uh, get my likes up. You have two minutes to get the likes up or we go to intermission. We go to intermission, I play a loud, hard rock song until you get the likes up. All right, so we understand that you ladies are out living your best life, hot girl summer. You got your, you got your, you're getting flued out. You got this guy trying to get you. This guy, especially if you're an eight or nine, if you're a Tina, you know, Hillary's already got married. But Tina, Tina's still out here. Tina and Angie, still out here. All right, so what what happens to, you know, Aaron, you know, the above average guy? And then Keith, the Henry. What, what, what happens to these guys? Should they wait until you've got out and dated and had your fun, and then after 30, you decide you want to settle down and choose him? After you've been alpha widowed, meaning you went out and had the alpha guy, had your crazy sexual escapades, and now you want to go ahead and marry him, and then you want to play Pollyanna school mom and act like you ain't had a, a life out there. You know, and I don't begrudge anybody for living the life, but everything has choices. See, these guys are successful and competitive and they're ready to keep on moving with life and waiting to when waiting to marry and waiting to marry inside your race is wasting time. That's what I hear from a lot of guys. It's like, well, wait a minute, Kev. I get myself together. I do everything I'm supposed to do. What am I supposed to do if 80% of my women aren't even fit? What am I supposed to do? If I've done everything I'm supposed to do and I've got myself on track and I'm ready to get, I'm ready to get me serious in a relationship, move forward, build a family, have children and move forward. What am I supposed to do? When I look to my race of women, 80% are even in, in shape. And of the, and of the 20% that are, most of them are not looking for marriage until their late twenties. What am I supposed to do? And even when I'm happened to find one that may be in my city, our culture is such that we were raised to think of each other as independence, not interdependent. 
What what do you get? What are you telling these guys to do? And then here comes Becky, Marisol, Mylene, Anu, and they are not only wanting to get married, they were raised to think of men as integral, integral to life. That they were raised to think of getting married and building with somebody in their youth. So I got to ask you the question, ladies. If your son was a high value or a successful man, what should he do? See, you thought I was going to ask you what you think about men today. No, 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 no. I'm going to ask you to play it forward. I want you to play it forward. You have gone through the trouble of raising a successful, competitive, or a high value son. What are you going to tell him to do? What are you going to tell him to do? Now, here's the thing. In the in the comment section, um, I don't want it to get pejorative. I don't want it to get insulting. We're going to have a, a conversation, men and women, like grown-ups. If I see you in here talking crazy about men, I'm going to time you out. If I see you in here talking crazy about the women, I'm going to time you out. Uh, yeah, dude, why are you in here spamming my chat room? Don't come in my chat room spamming stuff. Yes, and and reality is this, you know, on my show, you've heard me say, I feel sorry for, you know, I've had people, in the, brothers in the comment section, are we starting to see women open their eyes? Uh, but I'm just one man, you know, and I will say, I feel sorry for many women who, many of our sisters who were lied to, led astray, but the fact of the matter is, I see young men who are doing the work, wanting to continue to move forward in life. And I cannot in good conscience tell them that they need to spend the next 10 or 15 years just waiting. Well, wait a minute, Kevin. Wait a minute, Kevin. You're telling these guys that they should date out? I'm saying that I'm asking you what would you tell them. Here's one of the common objections. Well, wait, wait a minute. These guys normally say, well, they've dated this girl or they dated Kim and Keisha and Tammy and Tanisha and Shannon and Karen and, and Zoe and, and, and Amber. Well, they but they haven't dated all black women. That is one of the how, how, that's the number one reason you've dated some black women, but you haven't dated all black women. Brothers, men, how many times have you heard this? You've dated some. But you haven't dated all. If you've heard this as a man, raise your hand. Put a one in the chat room. You've dated some black women, but you haven't dated all. Put in a one in the chat room if you heard that. The some, not all. I mean, you've only dated some. <clears throat> Ooh. Brown Becky, whoo, the lies. Uh, look here, chick. You, you need to know where you are. You need to know where you are. You call in my show if you like to, but don't come over here talking crazy. I don't lie over here. Look at all these men saying they've heard this. You've dated some, but you haven't dated all. And the thing is, my question is this to the black women. To the black women who tell these to guys to stand in racial solidarity. Okay. I'm not taking a position. I'm asking the questions. I'm asking the women, what should the men do? What would you tell your son to do? What would you tell your blood brother to do? What would you tell him to do? You tell them to just stand there and, 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 and you know, to a competitive, successful or high value man, the most important asset is time. The most important resource is time. Wasting time. Wasting time. Well, you got to put in time and effort. Well, Marisol, Mylene, Becky and, and I knew are coming after him, uh, after uh, Keith and after Marcus and after Reggie. I mean, and after Aaron and after Greg. These women aren't wasting time. Matter of fact, Dr. Tia Johnson talks about how these women are in, enrolled in his class right now, 
in college to learn how to be better girlfriends and wives for black men. These women aren't are approaching. They are actively competing for men. So you want, you're telling your brother, your son, that he should take his active time to pursue a passive possible partner? Let me say that again. You're telling your brother, your love blood brother, or your biological son, that he should take his time to pursue, actively pursue a passive possible partner. You want him to actively pursue somebody who's passive. Well, he has to actively pursue these, but these women are actively pursuing him. How that's supposed to work? Okay, scratch that. He's out here already dating and he can't find where are all the good ones. Where are all the good women at? Where are they? I've said it myself. If you are a competitive or a high value woman, it's only a fool hides value. If you're out there, why can't he find you? Because Becky, Marisol, Mylene, and I knew ain't having any problems finding one in three black men who have a college degree marry out. They're not having a problem finding black men. Why are you, if you consider yourself to be a competitive or a higher value woman, having a problem finding them? Is it because you're sitting there waiting for God to do it? You're waiting on Jesus? What is it? Or Heather's learning to fry chicken. Well, you ain't there at all, black women. So what is he supposed to do? Oh, I get it. He's supposed to move. I get it. It's, it's the men that are supposed to go be successful in his area. Then he's supposed to move wherever he is and then go, be, go move where the women are and then go hunt the women. Well, if he's doing all that, what about the business? See, this is what you ladies need to understand. Successful, competitive men, you must compete for these. You must compete for these men. You must compete with the women that are around him. And women are drawn to power, money, and status. If the man you want has power, money, and status, you best believe there's going to be a group of women around him. How competitive are you with those women? And expecting him to pick solely on racial solidarity? Okay, I think it's a pretty, uh, I don't think that's a power position. But I'm willing to hear the argument. What would you tell your brother to do? What would you tell your son to do? Well, he ain't at all the black women. Okay, my question is also to this. How many, how many women should he date before he does that? How many black women should a black man date? Before he starts dating white women. I'm just going to go there tonight. I'm going there. Forget Marisol, Mylene, and Anu. Let's just go there. How many black women should a black man date before he starts dating white women? Yeah, trigger alert. Trigger alert. Trigger alert. Trigger alert. Trigger alert. How many black men, how many black women should a black man date? Before he starts dating white women. Oh, yeah, we yeah, I told you I'd get my likes up. Y'all thought I was playing, huh? Get my likes up. We're gonna need at least ten people to drop ninety-nine cents. She's your queen to be. 200 more likes. Come on. Two hundred more. Let's get them. Come on. 
She's your queen to be. <laughs> they are getting mad at me. What would you tell your brother, ladies? What would you tell him? Get him up, get him up. What would you tell your brother? What would you tell him? Bro, I love you. I want to see you happy. The women out here that are quote unquote on your level, they're, they, they are not trying to even stay in shape for themselves. They ain't even trying to stay fit for themselves. I know you can't take her to the Home Builders Association ball. I know you can't take her to the, you can't take her anywhere. She got, you know, she can't wear something with her back out with all them rolls and carrying on. I mean, really? What would you tell these men? Because these are the competitive, successful men. These are the guys on the way to being those high value men. Yet you should just pick a woman who's unfit, not physically fit, that doesn't even prize her appearance. When you have fit women checking for you, uh, it's not purple, it's blue. What are you telling the guys that they should do? What are you telling the guys they should do? Are you saying that, look here, man, I, I don't, I know what I want. I know that I raised you to love this. Man, if you type in all caps, uh, if you keep in typing in all caps, you're going to get uh, timed out. Uh, Victoria Whitlock, I already timed you out earlier today. You need to slow your roll. I'm going to go ahead and help you because I'm not going to, I'm not going to have you spam my chat room. You've been on one for the last two hours. You came over here two hours early to start typing to nobody. Not going to happen. The things we do for love. What's your husband say, Stacey Baldwin? Because uh, if anybody, um, you know, I, my position is I think brothers love sisters more than sisters love brothers. I think if black women could date out like black men can, you'd be gone. But reality is most of you can't. It's just my personal opinion. I personally think that if black women in mass had the same level of market attractiveness to, to non-black people as black men have to non-black people, if you had the options that the rank and file brother had, you would take them. I think a lot of you feel like you're stuck with black men because you can't get nothing else. Because look at how you show up for them. I say women show, I say women tell men what they think they deserve by their appearance and their attitude. So if the average black woman to date, 80% of you are overweight, you're telling black men you don't think they deserve much. If black men have been saying they want just cooperation and you have woman after woman after woman saying, yeah, I know that, but they're not getting it. Black men aren't getting it. You're saying that they don't deserve cooperation and deserve a woman who doesn't care about her appearance. You know that won't fly with anybody else. And then when you say something about it, what do so many black women say? Well, somebody will have to, somebody love her. Somebody will hit it. Somebody That's always the comeback. When you start saying something about it, when you start saying something about it, somebody will hit it. Somebody will hit it. Somebody will hit it. That, that's how low it sank. But tonight we're talking about it. What should you tell them? What would you tell your brother? And tonight we're not worried about what's going on with the women. Tonight I'm asking the women what you would tell the men. 
What are you telling the men they should do? What should they do, ladies? Because I'm just communicating what I'm hearing from my clients, what I've heard from men over the last decades. And I'm asking you ladies what you would tell these men they should do. Actionable advice. Not just pray, not just keep keep hope alive and you will find the uh, one out of five black women that are in shape and pray to God that she is unmarried, no children, sane. I mean, we're just talking about fitness. If you find the one out of one out of five that's just in shape, she still got to be unmarried, no kids, sane. We haven't even adjusted for looks yet. That what are the numbers? Twenty million black women, eighty percent overweight. So that man drops you from twenty to four million. Four million total. That's not even adjusted for age. If you adjust for age from age eighteen to forty-five, you drop that number down to roughly about one point six million. One point six million. That's not even adjusted for marital status. 23, 20, 26% or 32% marital rate. Well, it's a 27, 28% marital rate. Let's call it 30, 1.6. Okay. So for simple math, you're talking around roughly 800,000. Let's give it a million black women that aren't unmarried. A million that are in shape. And unmarried, we still have an in shape, unmarried, 18 to 45, a million, plus or minus. All right, a million. And that's across the United States. Then we still have to say unmarried, in shape. What percentage of those have kids? Then you can start going into the things like looks. Then you can start going into things like education, uh, income, whatever. You always talk about where are all the good men. Where are all the good women at? The good fit women. The good fit. Where are all the good women at? And by good, we mean fit and cooperative. Where are all the good black women at? Fit and cooperative. Where are all the good black women at? Fit and cooperative. Where are all the good black women at? Fit and cooperative. That's it. It's all we it's all we talk about fit cooperative and single fit cooperative and single fit cooperative single f c s f c s where are the fit cooperative and single black women where they at ho where they at ho where they at ho where they at ho do it baby stick it baby do it baby stick it baby do it baby oh see you talking shit tonight Kevin it, it ain't that easy you make it seem like that it's that bad out here for brothers. Really? Well, if black men in the room today, in my group, 700 people, all the men in the group have raised their hands saying they want to get married. And none of them could find a woman that fit their minimum basic standard. Four of them have found them in my group in less than 90 days. But there only exists because I actually made a group. Had I not made a group, they'd still be out here. Successful attorneys and this and that. Fit cooperative. Girl, you better stop. I see you out there. Look here. Girl, stop. You get me thrown off. Uh, fit cooperative is single. Okay. Successful men. I'm talking about brother, brothers. I'm talking about a brothers that are the caliber. He sees a sister he like, step to her inside of 10 days, getting flued out. Back and forth, face and public and everything. We're talking about a brother that was, you know, arguably had been there, done that. He was a legitimate seven-figure dude. Solid dude. Man, I'm telling you, I know men want to do this. Men want relationship because it's the next steps. Men don't want to be single for the rest of their life. I know a lot of people like, I've, I heard people saying millionaires should never get married. You stupid. 90% of millionaires and billionaires are married. And if you don't understand that, you need to stay in school. You're not going to find a glut of 
single bachelor millionaires and billionaires because you're just not. I'm not going to teach that class again. So if I hear you little, you guys say this stuff, you're just showing you don't understand how the world works. Oh, well, it's a different time. And da, 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 da. Funk that. It's not. Human beings are the same. Why is it a civil war between black women? Because black, black women won't give black men what they want. It's my opinion. Black women won't give the black men that they want what they want. Let me say that again. Shaquille asked, it's like a civil war going on between black men and black women. Why? Let me give you, an, let me give you a simple ex explanation. The black women, black women won't give the black men that they say they want what they want. See, you, the women say they want men who are have resources, competitive, productive, wanting to pay the cost to be the boss, traditional, all these other kind of things. Great. And when you and for the longest you say you couldn't find those men. Now showing you that these men exist. Facts, figures, data, statistics, numbers in your face. Blackdemographics.com, CDC, Department of uh, Labor Statistics. You will hear now you hear women trying to argue how the numbers were calculated instead of just saying, hey, bitch, where's your man? Next time I hear one of you bald head broad sitting around trying to argue about the numbers and how the stats were calculated. All I want to hear from you is where's your man? Well, who's the sample size and who can, who did this? You don't know. They could they could skew any study. Oh, so you would rather sit around and talk about how the study was done versus uh, who's proposing to you? Why can't you find a man? That's all I want to hear from you. I want to hear shit about the study. I don't want to hear nothing about American Institute. I don't want to hear anything about the numbers I'm talking about. I want to know why your big head ass can't find a man. Since you since you're supposed to be the shit and all. Oh, I'm going there tonight. So y'all might as well dig deep. Dig deep. We're going there tonight. Why can't your big head ass find a man? Hmm? Why not? Why can't you find one? You the shit, right? I'm a PhD. You a PhD and shit, right? You everything a man's supposed to want more. Then why can't you find one? But you sure got a... Hmm, right. I've heard some of the stupidest arguments. But all I want to hear from these women making these arguments, why can't you find your man? Now, don't talk about the collective and what's going on on the moon and out in the, you know, uh, Delta Quadrant. You know, what's going on on the ninth, uh, you know, around, you know, the, the rings of Saturn. No, bitch. Why can't you seem to get your bald head ass a man? <clears throat> because this is what men have, black men have heard over and over and over and over again. That either if you are out there competitive, successful, this, you're abusive, a cheater, uh, down low gay, or you're dating out. So, uh, well, then why shouldn't they? Since, since either they don't exist, and when they do exist, you find something wrong with them, why should they stay? What would you tell them? How inviting does it? Brother says it seems like a civil war. Why, why would you be at war with a woman? What's the war? What's the war about? I thought the war was there were, none, there were no men. But now you're showing that men exist. And then if you get one in four are marrying in their lifetime, if one in four black women are marrying in their lifetime, and we got a 51% divorce rate, that's higher than that in the black community. But I don't know the number, so I'm going to take the low number. If the number is still 51%, if the number still holds, why are eight out of ten of those divorces being filed by black women? If you're the least married, why are you defiling divorce at a rate four times higher than your men? So even if a black man did stay around, would a black woman stay with him? How many times have you guys heard on my show how long were you with the guy? Oh, I was with the guy for two years, four years. Why didn't you get married? Well, something happened. Uh... Who ended it? I did. I ended it. How many times we hear this? I ended it. Why? Oh, I ended it. I ended it. And then you end it. Why'd you end it? Especially the marriage. And all of a sudden, why'd you end it? Oh, because it got abusive. All of a sudden, all these men out here, just black men. All of a sudden, we've had an epidemic of black men who get married to black women. And they just apparently just whooping ass from coast to coast.
We had a woman coming in here talking about she was married to a family law attorney in Dallas, and he was apparently whooping her tail. I'm like, whoa, you're going to lose your law license. You didn't file no papers on that? What? You ever notice how so many of these women who get divorced is always they were getting beat down? I don't see no Ike and Tina stuff happening. I don't see swole up eye happening. I don't, especially some of these big old husky manly loud talking. You ain't getting your butt whipped. It's just a convenient excuse. If you say abuse, infidelity, no one's supposed to question it. I'm sorry. I question it. I don't trust most of what I hear from some of you guys, from some of you ladies. I don't believe it. Do you even want to be married, black women? That's the choice. I know you want the lifestyle. I know you want the lifestyle. I know you want the three kids to live in Buckhead in the Porsche truck. But what I never hear you talking about is how you're going to be a benefit to a man. So we're going to get into it tonight. We're talking about the kind and caliber of men that you say you want, that definitely other women of other races want. And they are sneaking over here. They're tiptoeing over into enemy territory and doing like the invasion of the body snatchers, picking them up one at a time, picking them up one at a time. And all that's happening to you is you getting older and older and older. And now when, when you look up and 10 black men is going to the prom with 10 white women, you're like, what's going on? When you got women on this YouTube channel, on, on YouTube saying that their sons, in my, in my chat room, I got women who are pro-black. Saying their sons, young sons, early, early teens, late teens to early 20s, say they don't even want to date black women. Got no problem with it, got no hate for them, but I've just seen too much. They're too mean, they're too hard to get along with, too this, too that. On my channel, in the comment section, you know who you are, ladies? Why? Why? And then I hear young black women acting like they got options, like we ain't going to do this, we ain't going to do that. Ain't no, who picking you? So it's time to get real. If one third of your college educated men are marry, who marry, marry out, if one third of your college educated men who marry, marry out, if the young men coming up are starting to uh, not even date black women, at what point do black women stop and say, hold up, we need to call a timeout and address what's going on with this situation. Because, see, you're used to blame it on the baby boomers and Generation X and crack and white supremacy. And I was like, what about, the, what about the young boys, the guys who are just starting dating? Why are you skipping over dating black women at 16 years old? Why do you have black men saying, I'm not even trying to hear that before they go to college? It's to the point, ladies, where you're going to have to start having some answers for these men. If you don't want to be fit, you don't want to be cooperative, what would you tell these men they should do? That's the question. Let's open the call lines because I know it is going to be smoking. And again, remember, you're going to be telling the guys what they should do. Not me, them. Let's get it.
vendo mi alma, lo lograré Seré el más grande, no olvidaré De dónde vengo ni cómo voy Money work yeah. El mundo quiere dinero De corazón, de corazón La plata no te hace ser feliz Ella es de corazón, de corazón La plata no te hace ser feliz Money work El mundo quiere dinero Lunático Ladies only, ladies only, ladies only. What would, I really want to hear from you, ladies. What would you tell your brothers they should do? Your brother, your blood brother, what would you tell him he should do? Now, understand something. I'll be nice to you if you're nice to me, but don't come in here acting crazy because men really want to know what you guys think they should do because... It doesn't seem like many sisters want brothers to do much anything other than wait indefinitely. Here women talking about, I'm getting myself in shape. Okay, well, how long should it take to get yourself in shape? Hello? Unmute yourself, please. How are you? I'm good. You got it. Um, so I guess what I wanted to first, I wanted to respond to the first thing you said about how long a black, black men should wait on black women. Oh, just a second. I uh, want to make sure that I'm off mute. Uh, go ahead. Do, 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 test, 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 test. Go ahead. Go, <laughs> go ahead. Okay. So, um, yeah, so yeah, what I wanted to say is that I think, I don't know. I think black men need to start dating seriously when they're younger as opposed to waiting to their middle age ready to start a family and just okay hold on energy. they should start dating in their youth dating seriously younger like the way asians do where it's the man and woman both dating seriously at younger ages um because i think that gives you more time to find somebody what um, age that you, like out of college okay um I I know most people start dating or out of training or most people start da start dating at sixteen years old. No, I'm saying dating seriously, like dating to marry. If you know you want to okay. be married, but the thing is, yeah. most people start. How old are you? Twenty two. All right, you're you're a bit young for this, so you don't know what you're talking about. Let me tell you, most people start dating. the 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 national age is sixteen. Most Many people are already married by non-black folks are getting married between the ages of 21 and 25. Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. So I even I have a lot of older black male friends and a lot of your, them are where's your, 30. where's your boyfriend? I have a boyfriend, yeah. He's not here, but okay. I have a boyfriend. How long have you guys been together? We've been together four months. Four months. Are you are you wanting to get married? Yeah. Okay. Does he want to get married? Yeah. Okay. And he's older, so. It's, okay. So yeah. you would tell black men they need to start dating younger, meaning black men. Black men need to date younger. Who would they date, though? They date black women in college. Not just black women, but they 
But <laughs> they date black women in college. No, they can't. The ones they can't, Kimmy. Why not? Listen, I okay, okay. You think these that I'm just making this shit up? No, I don't okay, think well, you're making Okay, apparently you don't up. understand that many many women your age aren't trying to deal with guys your age because they're broke. How old is your boyfriend? 38. Thank you for making my point. I tried, Why aren't you look, dating tried, a guy your age? I tried that, and he wasted my time. What do you mean he wasted your time? Well, we so I dated this guy for a year, and then he decided that he wanted to do his own thing. Okay. Um, well, here's the thing. I, I'm not going to try to get into what went on with your relationship. You're kind of young for this, but here's the thing. Black men do want to date. thing is, women your age, in general, aren't trying to date younger guys because young guys are broke. So you end up wanting older guys, which is fine, um, as long as you're dating towards marriage. And at 38 years old, you're how old? 22. Yeah. Has he met your parents? Uh, not yet. Was he, well, what, why? I got all kind of questions for this. At 38 and you're 22. We're do, so we're doing we're doing we're we're, we're we're a little bit long distance currently. I don't yeah, care we'll what he is. Out. He's almost forty. You're you're twenty two. He shouldn't be anywhere near you unless he's trying to trying to marry you. We're, we're working on this. It's, it's not, long not we ain't right now, we ain't difficult. working on shit. He's a forty year old man. Okay. You're twenty two. He should know have ring in pocket. Step into a twenty two year old woman. See, that, you need to call back on another show because here's the problem. First off, yes, you need to start dating younger. But black men can't date younger because they can't date black women because black women ain't trying to check for black men because they want men with money in the bag and all this kind of stuff. And you don't have that when you're your age, number one. But number two, let's shift gears. Where's your daddy at? Um, He's not around. Can't be around. He, you know, he's Cannot around. He cannot be around because you're dating a 40-year-old dude. Problem number one. Did you? Did this guy that you're dating, did he step to you with the intention of marrying you? Uh, yes. Did you make did you make marriage a requirement before you went out on a date with him? Um, no, no but we discussed no, you did that on not. the first date. Then, then, then you didn't. Then you cannot okay. be sure of where he's going. That's why I asked you about your parents. Because a, young, a man that 38 years old, around 28 year old, 22 year old young lady, uh, he shouldn't be around you unless... You don't want to get married, and he doesn't want to get married. But if you want to get married, but we we haven't even slept together yet, so that's another thing. That I don't made give a damn. Serious, okay, okay. I don't care. All right. Fall back, watch the show. He needs to be. This man needs to be vetted. He needs to be vetted by men. And you need to fall back and watch some more of the show. Thank you, sis. Okay. Uh, yeah, twenty-two-year-old women. Yeah. And if you got a problem with it, bro, you can call me. If you got a problem with it, bro, you can call me. I'll take your call. I don't. I think that as a as a thirty eight year old man, you need to be very clear on why you're messing dealing with a woman younger than you. If it's just a physical thing and she's not looking to be married, she's looking for a fun and a. And somebody a date older and they have new experiences, that's fine. But you don't play with young women wanting to get married, especially as a man that age. You need your ass up if you're playing games. <clears throat> All right. So let's get on to it. Carm. Hello. Unmute. Hey. How are you? Very well. How you doing? I'm good. What would you tell men that they um, should high value or success should successful, competitive, or high value men marry out? Yes. Okay. Why? Because if they worked hard enough and long enough, their purpose was to be able to get anything they want. Okay. So whatever they want, they can buy. 
Do you have sons? Three. Uh, makes sense. Um, <laughs> now, how old is the youngest? Eleven. How old is the oldest? Twenty-one. Um, would you prefer that they marry black women? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Okay. And the middle one is how old? 15. So the 21 year old, what is he telling you dating is like for him with black women? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> it's, you know what? The experience. Oh, I know what. <laughs> I just want you to say it. <laughs> It's, it's, it's invigorating because when he tells me about his dating choices, I go back to what I instilled in him as a baby until where he is right now. Okay, but what is he telling so you? So I, I what, set the what, example. What is he telling so you about he his tells choices? Me is, what okay. he tells me is, oh my God. Okay. Like he has a type and she is not black really? she is not brown as me she does not have the texture of hair as I do she is more of a mixed uh, how do you say it like a long hair light skin yeah uh, All one the of time, the things we talk um, about in America we kind of like call that racially ambiguous but uh, a lot of women who, who are Latina kind of fit that prototype yes. or yes, a fair skinned black woman. But, but the thing is, what is she, why is he choosing these women? Because they bring, he told me, he said, mom, and I don't get into his business. I just kind of listen to what he says and the pictures that he chooses to show me. And so that's when I learned he had a type. And what he says is that in our in our community, which is predominantly black, and the young girls that are his age are nasty, and they are black. And I'm nasty? sorry to say it, nasty. What do you mean nasty? nasty. Meaning what? They look dirty. Uh oh. They got a lot of tattoos, stinky hair from weave and wigs, cursing. Okay. They don't cook. Um So do you know when you, food, so do you do, bad body type? So let, me, let me ask you some questions. As as a mother with three boys, do you know any mothers of daughters? Do you have any friends yes. who have daughters? Yes, 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 yes. So what do you talk to the women about their daughters? Because their daughters should be being raised for your I son. I can't. I can't. You can't tell them anything. They're getting tattoos. I said, ugh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me stop right here, though, because we have something. You got three boys, and your oldest is basically saying, I see you, Mom, but the women, the black women, are not like you. They're they're yeah. you use the word nasty. I'm gonna say unappealing. Um, okay. Uh, and I want to fix. I want to stick on the the uh, attitudinal things, the attitudes, yeah. uh, the the cursing, the uh, inability to cooperate, not really wanting to cook or anything like that. Because uh, the other ones can be easily mischaracterized as pejorative. You know, the, the weave and all that. I don't want to get down that path. So okay. you're telling me that as a, as a mother in a community, you can't go to another mother and say, sis, I got three boys. You got three girls. Well, let me tell you, my sons are not dating women that look like your daughters. And here's what they're saying. And, you know, I would love to see our children get together and build this Wakanda. But you're telling me as a mother, you can't go to a mother and say nothing to her about her daughters. Not even in my own family. Oh shit! Where the daddy? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> there you go. See what happened? This is this is the problem. Where the daddies? Because see, if I, you could go to a father and say something, but you can't go to a mother because she ain't trying to hear it. And if I did not have his support with this message, 
You mean they will be they're mute. So yes. So he supports me. Actually, we are <laughs> arm in arm, shoulder in shoulder. Like of course, those are your boys. Home, you, you didn't raise them to you, throw them away. <laughs> listen, I told him, don't you bring try it and see what's gonna happen. Uh, try it. Well, you know what. Thank you for being honest um, because there are things that a woman and a mother can only say that people just won't receive from me. Uh, I appreciate you calling in. I'm glad that you guys seem to have something working. Keep the lines of communication open. With can your I son. just say this? Go ahead. Please, go ahead. Go you, I just want to say one thing. I appreciate your channel so much. You doing the right thing. Keep it moving. Keep it progressing. You shooting them arrows to the yeah. sky and they are hitting. Yeah. You understand me? <laughs> they are hitting. Keep it up. Keep Thank it up. Keep it up. I support you in whatever way. We will support you in whatever way we can. And guess what? My husband is your frat. Oh, from Jackson, yo. Jackson State, Mississippi from <laughs> the 60s. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I have a program coming up for for young men. It's called men. Another thing called Men in Training where I'm going to talk about uh, image, yeah. style, and presenting forth. Uh, yeah, stay tuned on Love to it. the videos, pre-recorded videos too. All right. God bless your soul. Shout out to the silhouettes. Keep it going. That's the silhouette yes. there, y'all. Bye bye. Bye. So when you marry a member of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, no matter what she is, she could be in a sorority. Every Kappa's wife becomes a member, a silhouette. So she's married to a noop. There's a silhouette. Um. Okay. I see you ladies in the, in the chat room. Let me, let me back up. Ladies, I know that was a little hard to hear, but that's why I asked, what would you tell, if you were a mother or you had brothers, what would you tell them? See, it's easy when you, it's easier when you're thinking of it as you're single, I'm single, and we're debating. But if it's your blood, you want the best for them. And we have to, how do we fix this if a mother can't speak to mothers about the caliber and kind of daughters they're rearing? Because, again, I asked that question, where are the fathers? All right, Miss Wright, you're next. How you doing? I'm pretty good. How are you? Go um, ahead. I'm calling because... Um, what you said resonated. I have a brother, he's adopted, but okay. very much my blood. Um, and I recently went to his wedding uh, two months ago and it was an interracial wedding. Mm -hmm. And um, he started talking to me very seriously about wanting to be married. Mm -hmm. I would say about eight years ago, I was already married. I've been married 11 years to my okay. college sweetheart and we have three kids, I homeschool. So when you're, uh -oh. <laughs> when you're describing stuff, like what these women want, I'm like, yeah, it's possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's entirely possible, but you, it's better to start young. Um, right. But anyway, so my brother, he had been trying to date in his race and um, it just wasn't, it wasn't hitting. The women were very demanding, but not mm -hmm. very giving. And he would come to me and he would say, you know, what should I do? And he, he, to me, my brother is like, you can't get no better than my brother. He's law he school, older or captain in the army. Is he older he's, or he's, young? younger? He's one year younger. Okay. So he's law school, captain in the military, you know, getting ready to take company command, in shape, tall, slim, you know, all the things. <laughs> he's everything. Straight out of central casting out of a movie. He's he's wonderful. But of course, I'm biased. He's my brother. <laughs> um, and so anyway, like uh, I would say three years ago, he came to me very cautious. We were actually on a hike and we had gone up this mountain. He was like, you know, what do you think about me dating outside of our race? And I was like, mm. I think what's taking you so long? You, you getting old, you're old mate. We're from the South. What's taking you so long? Right. To get married? <laughs> and, um, right. you know, he went for it. And the first woman he dated outside of his race ended up a accusing him of being all the things he wasn't. She had even set up a marriage registry on um, like a, a website before he'd even proposed. Cause I, I mm. saw it, I, I was, you know, doing some fact checking on her and I looked him up 
and I looked her up and she had posted a wedding date. He had not proposed because I called him immediately and said, did uh -oh. you propose and not tell me? Wow. And yeah, crazy. <laughs> well, crazy comes in all colors, but he, yeah, he got so that's past all, her. I and, say, like, it's, but, but, you know, but he's married now though, right? He is married now. She's wonderful. How long have they been and married? Just two months. So, like, so they got married I heard you correctly though, when your brother came to you kind of tepid or sheepish about asking you about this. Right. Yeah. Because, Why do you think that um, is? Well, we're from the South. So right. it's, it's, and even though we have relatives who have been in interracial marriages, it's harder. Like, I think I heard you mention on a different show. It is harder. You have different experiences when you marry someone outside your race. Well, he came to, so. you, he came to his older sister in a position because he didn't know how you were going to take it. And you said, why aren't you, why, why aren't you already married? You know, I think. Well, that, I mean, like, why, why aren't you already Why aren't you already why, why are doing you something settled? else? Hold yeah. on. Hey, Ike. I, hey, hold on, Ike. Just a second. I, I got to play Ike's song real quick. I don't, know if you, I don't know if you heard this. Ike, you didn't hear your, your remix, man. Somebody remixed your song, Ike. The king and will not be. I, 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 All right, I had to play that. But see, I think it shows the difference that black men still have for black women. That even he stepped to his sister in a way, it was like, I don't know how she's gonna take it. And you're like, bruh, I, I think the world of you, and you should have did this a minute ago. And yeah. I think that's a good thing to tell him. But um, have you always felt that way, or did you just kind of start to realize that, hey, man, there's not a lot of good choices out here for a man like my brother? I think I realized it more with uh, my husband has a lot of single friends who I, I think you would consider them Henry's. Okay. Um, they're all high earners. They're, they're good guys, and they're all still single and looking. And I, I would... I guess I didn't notice it at the beginning of our marriage because we got married very young. We were 22, just out of college. Right, right, right. right. Um, so I didn't pay attention to it then because I felt like we, we we were, like I said, abnormal for getting married young. <laughs> no, yeah, I wasn't but, normal as French toast. That wasn't the right thing to do. <laughs> but like when we were starting to get to be 26, 27, I'm like, why haven't you been in anybody's wedding? Like what's mm -hmm. going on with your friends? Why aren't they getting married? And my husband would just say, like, oh, well, they're dating, but uh, they found a wife. <laughs> yeah, they're not they're not settling down. And and occasionally, like me and my husband, our last name is Wright, as you can see. So we're we're called the Wright House, and people bring their mm. significant others to the Wright House, basically for <laughs> I don't want right, to say our right, approval, right, right. but to, but to run it by us before they take it to their parents, because we're like the old people of our friend group. Well, here's what I need you to do me. I need, I need you to do me, sis. I need you to send me an email. I'm going to do a follow-up broadcast of this. But I need to keep okay. cycling through this. I think this is a, a conversation that actually we can kind of build on. And I'm going to need some people other than just myself. Because this platform, I, I run the channel, but it is going to be bigger than me. And I need folks that, like you that have lived it, got credibility to speak about it. So it could be more received by other people. Can you do that for me? Um, sure. I'm yeah. going to... Uh, I'll put my my email address. Uh, the moderators will put it in the, in the chat room. Okay. Okay, sounds good. All right, thank you, Miss Wright. Bye bye. Uh, all right, look. Um, you know, my guess is no black woman wants to have to think that their son or their brother would be damn near forced to marry outside of black women. That's just not how human beings, are, our, our brains are set up. We're set up to want to pick ourselves. So when I say that a lot of times brothers are, uh, brothers are, are, are very low. That's why I, Sarah unmute yourself. I laugh when I heard somebody say, women, sisters are more loyal. I'm like, I think if black women could date out like black men, they, many of them would have done it. Just my opinion. Sarah, how are you? Should, uh, should competitive or successful high value men marry out? 
if they can't find um, potential spouses in their race, if they, they cannot should. find, yeah, if they cannot, but if they if they can, if it's possible, then yes. But I will admit it's very difficult to find um, good matches. Honestly, well, even in my experience, just having friends is difficult. So, well, marrying between. Well, how about I, 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 I did ask this question earlier, Sarah. So maybe you could answer it for me. Um, if you just had a ballpark, how many, how many people should you date before you consider dating out? Honestly, maybe like two or three, or just two, two or three. Yeah. Because <laughs> see, I'm a la- I'm you laughing, Sarah, because when I've heard, I've heard some black women say, "Yeah, when I hear black men talking about they dated out," and I'm like, "Well, they ain't dated all black women." They've only dated like two or three. And I'm like, well, and I started thinking, I'm like, well, how many women do these do these women think men should date before they can draw a picture? I'm thinking, and so it, it shocks me to hear you say two or three because when a man says two or three, they get screamed at. Well, I, honestly, I feel like you can't, you can't date all black women. You, you, ha- you have to meet, you have to try and just date the few that you see that you find attractive. But if you keep running on blanks, then maybe it's time to expand. Well, how about, how about this? I think that when a man becomes successful and competitive, mm-hmm. that women make themselves kind of in his presence. Oh, no, that's very true. I think, I mean, I've seen that men pick from the women that are around. That's why Boaz or Ruth in the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, Boaz didn't go looking for Ruth. Ruth was happened to be around. So um, thank you for adding that in. Uh, Miss Henson has something she wants to add. Sarah, can you hold on just a second? Yeah. Okay. We'll go ahead and get Miss Henson in here. Miss Henson, you got your hand raised, so you must want to give it to me. All right, Miss Henson, go ahead and unmute yourself. Should, should, hi, should, 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 you need to mute the YouTube channels and things in the background. Go ahead. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you got for me on the topic? Um, so I, I think that you're right. I, I think that no high value black man should wait around because I think the exact same thing for black women. I actually just had a friend who married outside of his race. I went to their wedding about two years ago. He did marry a white woman, beautiful couple, and he is a uh, captain now. He is a policeman. Mm. And I thought that it was beautiful. But again, where he lives, he lives out in Boston. There isn't a lot of black women to choose from. And the ones that, you know, there are to choose from, you know, you have to take your pick. And so, yes, he did marry a white woman, but I, I thought that the union was beautiful. So well, I, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, I've had a, a couple in my group get together and she's in Boston and he's in Atlanta, but they met in my group or else they never would have crossed paths. Um, and you mentioned something about successful competitive and high value men. I think the successful competitive high value women have the same options as well. That's the trick. Um, It's the, I think everybody understands that they should not wait. The problem is these people, these, these two successful groups of people don't seem to be able to find one another. Do you think that's possible? Do you think that could be it? She muted herself. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Oh, I I absolutely think that's it because you might have a successful black woman that's in California who's doing really well. She may be working her way up in a company. You may have another black man that's over in Seattle. Uh And so we're placed all over the country, right? And so we may not. I'm going to tell you, Ms. Henson, I really wouldn't. I didn't. That group I made on Facebook was just kind of like on a, you know, I'm just trying shit. And when I say mm-hmm. four couples have met in under 90 days and one's talking about marriage and none of them are in the same city. So yeah, I'm like, I, I agree with you 100% about that. Uh, me and myself, I'm single. I'm 27. Um, I won't say what city or state I live in, That's okay. but definitely I'm, I'm working my way up. I just had an interview at four today with a very established luxury retailer. And so of course I'm looking for somebody who can bring a lot to the table, like what you're saying. And so as a 27 year old, I just went to the gym today. I'm keeping myself up and I have an interest in black men as well as other races, but bringing it back to black men is that what, that is what we're talking about. 
And as far as my friend goes, he met his wife in Boston. She is gorgeous. She's white. The union was beautiful. And he found who was, I mean, she was fit. She's gorgeous. She's, you know, you like you said, shot. like you mentioned you gonna earlier. You're going to give me a shot. You know, I, you know, it's a hard pill to swallow, but it is what it is. As far as me, I'm keeping myself up and I, I don't have a victim mindset. What about, let me, let me say this while I get on to the next person. Uh, mm-hmm. I would consider a matchmaker. Matchmakers is one thing that I don't think enough people consider. Because uh, mm-hmm. in effect, that's kind of what happened in my group. It was a matchmake of sorts. And, mm-hmm. I, you know, um, if you're if you're moving on up, as you say, yes, uh, yes, it's about it's about the connections more than anything else. I got more people coming in. Thank you for uh, adding to the conversation. I'm going to thank drop you. you back in. Uh, thank you, um, but I can't pronounce your name. I don't get it wrong. Uh, B U K K. Hi, unmute yourself. <clears throat> Hi there. How you doing, Kevin? I'm well. Um, so the question is, should Competitive, successful, high-value men marry out? So I think that's a really tough question, right? Because on the one, I want to be logical, right? The logical answer is to just say yes. Okay. But, I mean, I just feel like we can't really give up on one another. Because Black men and Black women, I think of us as a unit. So, um, I, I mean, I understand the situation like in the dating market, but I don't like to hear when people make it sound as though there are no good black women. Right. And it's the same thing from the other side as well. You know, sometimes you hear black women talking and you're like, okay, please stop. So, I mean, the logical answer to your question is yes, of course, you know, do what's best. Well, you, you. you said you don't like to see us give up on one another. Um, yeah. All right. How old are you? 35. Okay. So you're old enough to be able to answer this question. You know how I framed it. Right. Um, 80% of black women are overweight. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I, I got to ask who's give who, who do you think gave up first? <laughs> Um, I mean, I think, this, this, yeah. This, this is your opinion now. I'm not going to hold you to stats here. Yeah. I mean, yeah, if you think about it in that sense, yeah, Black women can be more competitive. I've never heard that stat before. So really? it's quite astonishing. Yeah, to, to be it's honest. It's like everywhere. I mean. Yeah. yeah, I definitely think that's a problem. But I also think that's a situation that can be remedied, right? It can be. But. If if men are just asking for fit, cooperative, single women, right. it's not much. It's not. And I don't know I'm, what region of the country you live in, but get out. I live in huh? Houston. Houston. I live in Houston, Texas. Well, yeah. then I live. So I know. Think I know. You can walk around Houston and see the average sister is not a dress size four. Yeah. So, so I hear you say you don't give up, but if you're a man who's already gone out and done the things he needs to do to be competitive, what's he picking from? And even if they are in the fit category, are they getting a cooperative? I hear what you're saying. Here's what I would like. I would like black women to be more competitive. I would like black women to say, all right, I'm going to give a black man what he wants, cooperation and fitness and single. I'm going to do that for him. Cause see, we tell a lot, we tell women a lot, you don't need to work out for a man. And I say, yes, you do. Cause I need to work for a woman. You're goddamn right. I can't have a beautiful woman and no money. Makes sense. I mean, Makes these sense. suits cost, <laughs> I mean, you know, and I can't walk around. So, I mean, we, we need, you say we're, we're, you say you think of us as a unit or a team. Mm-hmm. I would, I would say that that that's not our culture. Our culture, yeah, and, we're a bunch yeah. of individuals. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Um, I'm Nigerian. I don't know if you can okay. tell. Yeah, I can. And yeah, uh, I. De- I've definitely found that to be true. There's a lot of you know divisiveness. Well, and in it order, just, to, I, but I think you're onto something though. In order to get on the same page, we have to think of uh, ourselves as a team, because in that case, you do things for your teammates. 
that you right. may not necessarily do for yourself. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Let me go ahead and cycle through. Okay. I'm a Thank mute. you so go ahead. Uh -huh. Um, Sarah, I had you there. Sarah, I'm, Camille, I'm going to get you. Camille, go ahead. I'm, good evening, Kevin. How are you? I'm good. Um, should single, competitive, successful, high-value men marry out? What do you have for me? I'm, 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 oh, God. It's, it's bad <laughs> out here. For me. I'm sorry. I'm 52 years old. Okay. And I've been married for almost 21 years. Uh, met and married in about a year. When I met my husband, my best friend met and married in four months. Exactly. Four months. It don't take all that long now, does it? It don't take that long at Thank all. You. These women, they come into a situation and I understood I was turning 30, 31, between 30 and 32. And I understood the clock was ticking and something mm -hmm. just said, if you want to be married, you got to get out here and get out here seriously. Mm -hmm. And it was an internal thing uh, that just told me that I knew high risk pregnancy was 35. So mm -hmm. I ain't got no business trying to have kids or meet a man at 35 after my career is established. Right. But the sad thing is I'm a special ed teacher right now. And I have women on my caseload in their 20s with seven kids each. Oh, women. shut the front Black door. Women. And I tr they don't even report. We're virtual right TikTok, now. They don't TikTok, report the TikTok. kids are not coming to school. Tell them I got to work. I got to do this. And I'm real harsh because I'll tell, you know, the women, you know, we're preparing these boys for, to be married, to, to grow up and be able to take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. And you are not, and this is a team effort. Right. But they're busy. And a lot of them are my friends on Facebook. They don't even know it. And I'm looking at pictures posted up holding bottles. Stinky weaves in the hair salon. I have never had a weave in my head. My mm. children have never had weaves, and I'm a hairstylist. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna, y'all gonna give me shot talking about these stinky weaves, but you know, I know. And why not be you beautiful as, as it is? And so now my only son is 13. I okay. have daughters, three daughters, 17, 26, and 30. They, okay. I don't have any grandchildren. I taught them it's a marriage first, and then if you don't get married, then you don't have children. That's just how it goes. Right. Um, so my 13 year old lady, I had a conversation with him because I was, li uh, he listened to your show with me in the car on the way to your football 13, practice. Your, your, your 13 year old? Yes, my son. Okay. He listens to you huh. with, with me. And I asked him the question, you had a 24 year old girl on your show and she had a child when she was 14. Yes. So I turned Jasmine. and I asked him, I said, if you, if you make it to the NFL or when you do, I said, would you date her? And he said, no. He's 13, never dated. And I said, why? He said, because I have other options. <laughs> As a 13 year old, he understood that. Mm -hmm. And the single biggest mistake black women are making is they're having babies. They're doing things out of order. There is an order to everything. Mm -hmm. And I try to tell women and young girls, they don't want to listen to me. But my story is so tripped out because I got that revelation, like you talked about, after the fact. I had two daughters coming into my marriage, and my husband had two sons. Okay. But I understood what that cost me, mm -hmm. and I wasn't going to say it didn't cost me nothing. My right. husband is a Henry. I basically stay at home. I teach because I just wanted to go to work. Right. He's an excellent black man. There's some good ones out there, but black women don't want the good black men. Well, they don't. You you know what? Uh, you you over here going to church? I'm out that past collection plate. But you gave me some things I really don't want to be on. I need to, I need to get to this other question. Yeah, uh, Camille. Yes. Appreciate it though. Thank yes. you, sis. Thank you so much. Uh, dang, 13 years old. I better. I'm glad I started cleaning up my language. Uh, Sarah, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Did you have an unmute yourself real quick? I mean, um, what I was going to say is that I'm, uh, I have a friend who just got married, I think last year. He married an Indian girl, so okay, and he's black. So this is something that I see happening. It, for whatever reason, uh -huh. fitness is a problem. You know, I, I, I like exercise every day, whether yoga, all these things. But right. I noticed that a lot of my a lot of women around me don't do that. But they at least you're remaining competitive. At least I'm remaining competitive. There you and, go. But, then, but then if I like, sometimes you can't even tell them because you're worried that oh, if I say something, it's going to trigger them. Well, we'll 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 keep having the conversations, and by and by, hopefully, they'll start to get the point. 
But you keep being competitive and doing what you need to do, sis. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Shout out to all my Nigerians. All right, Nandi. She already getting ready with her Florida shirt on. Nandi, your microphone's not connected. And Daniela, your microphone's not connected. Nandi. Nandi, your your microphone, you just all in the mirror. Your microphone's not connected, sis. You, your microphone's not connected. She's over here getting all sexified. Um, damn. I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised that um I ain't been cussed out yet. But see, it's the framing of the question. See, if it was just man here, woman there, yeah, but then when it's like, what would you tell your son or your brother? And it's like, well, wait a minute. I want the best for them. But like the one caller said, you don't want to turn your back on one another team. Well, then we got to start. If that's truly what you want, you're going to have to start acting like teams as an individual. Um. And another thing, I know folks trip when I say it don't take no two, three years to get married, six months or less. Thank you for the people who call in and say they got married. Here's the thing. Understand what I'm saying. You know what you want. It does not take that long to determine whether or not somebody fits or doesn't fit. It's really the decision to go ahead and move forward. That's what terrifies most people. Nandi, your microphone's not connected. There's no sound. I'm going to drop you back and I'm going to drop you back in. All right, now make sure you connect your audio. Daniela, I'm going to drop you back and drop you back in. Make sure you connect your audio. Uh, your audio is not connected. So I can't I can't put you on with no audio. Hey. Uh, hey, Melinda. Melinda St. Pierre, how you doing? Take care of that man. He ran me down and say, hey, man, my wife watches you all the time. I wanted to say, hey. So, Nandy, I can't hear you. You got to connect your microphone. I cannot hear you. She's not paying attention. I'm going to have to drop you down. Put you in the waiting room. Put you in the waiting room. Okay. So. In order to fix any problem you have to first address it you first have to acknowledge it exists the kind of men that you say you want simply want fit cooperative and single I didn't even say they want submissive I'm not even going to go that far these guys just want fitness is so important Thelma on good times was Thelma because she had a Thelma body Thelma, God, ladies, you are you will be amazed at what giving getting yourself fit will do for your prospects. I can't I can't talk to you, ma'am. Your your microphone's not connected. I'm sorry. You'll be amazed at what it will do for your prospects. So here's the thing: I'm still opening the call lines. If you think I'm incorrect, if you think I'm wrong, if you think this is a bunch of BS. You can call in too. All I ask is that you are respectful. We can have a respectful back and forth. Um, but I really would like to know what you expect men to do. And what I'm seeing is we're expecting competitive, successful men to do even more work. And I'm seeing most women are not doing the minimum. That's a hard pill to swallow. That's what a lot of the callers have said. My brother is a captain in this in law school. He's gone on to make himself something. And we're talking about women in their 20s who are dress size 12 and 14 and 16s and 18s. You're not even doing the minimum. Fit and cooperative. He's not asking you to be a millionaire or a brain scientist, or a rocket surgeon. Come on. Nandi, I can't hear you. You can't. I can't put you on because there's no sound. She doesn't get it. 
Let me put it in chat room. Maybe she'll get it in chat room. Um, so if you're not giving guys the bare minimum, what are they supposed to do? You have no sound. No audio, Nandi. 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 Yeah, Boba. Shaka Zula. Yeah, Boba. Oh, be open, boy. Y'all gonna make it go back to Shaka Zula on y'all's ass. And see, the thing is, I think you know. I think a lot of you guys know that for the men who are out here who are competitive, you can't ask them to wait. That's why when I hear women say, I'm a dress size 12, I'm a 14, I'm working on it. I'm like, I need a sense of urgency from you because while you're working on it, you're wasting time. Shout out to the uh, to the Miss Wright. She said they got married at 22. Good for you. Y'all got married when y'all was too dumb to know any better. Y'all was too dumb to know any better. You were still living off Ikea, ramen noodles, uh, um, lunch meat, you know, going to Outback Steakhouse was special. Y'all was on sleeping bags, TV dinners, 10 pound bags of fryers, Kool-Aid, you know what I'm talking about? You know, having sex on the, on the floor because the floor was more comfortable than that cheap ass bed. You know, buying all the generic stuff because you couldn't afford Del Monte. Yeah, it was good times. Living that little hovel, drinking that little, you know, box wine and carrying on because you couldn't afford Kendall Jackson because you thought Kendall Jackson was expensive. Yeah, she was too damn young to know any better. And y'all grew up together and you got 12 or 13 or 15 years of chronicling each other's life. And that's the value. You know, yeah, you want to you want to mate that you're attracted to and sexy and all this other. It's to chronicle your life. So somebody can say, I've seen this person and they've grown from here to here to here to here. That's why anniversaries, and holidays and things like that are so important. You chronicle the markers of life. So when somebody transition goes on and shuffles out this mortal coil, people can say, I was there through the journey. Right now, so many of us are walking on our own journeys. Well, competitive, successful, high value men. They understand the network. The first network is family. And that is an integral part of a success for a competitive, successful, high value man. They're not worried about this scarcity mindset. I make a million dollars and have a chick take me half. That ain't, they don't come into these conversations because these men know they can go out and make it. Anything that they could possibly lose, they don't care. They're going to, they can lose it in the market, lose it in the divorce. You can lose it and go back and make it again. These guys don't think like that. Their brain ain't set up like that. Ike, did you like your song? I didn't see Ike's response, but Ike's song is dope. I am the king and will not be. Uh, 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 I am, I am. Okay, there's Nandi. Okay. Unmute yourself. I'm can you hear me now? I can hear you now. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. What you got for me? Um, I'm so the question is, should successful, competitive, or high value men marry out? I would say no. Okay, tell me why. Um, because you know what? I have dated out and uh it's not the life. It's not the life. They do not offer what they would really have for a black woman. They don't. Who's they? They meaning men who are not black. Okay, well, what would you tell black men, though? You, are you telling the black men that their experience will be the same? No, I would tell black men that you need to stick with black women. Why? Uh, because you know what? Women who are not black, who are white, who are Asian, who are Hispanic, they will not give you what a black woman can give you. What is that? Which is the experience and the, the culture. They can't give you what, uh, what is, is offered. They, they can give you what is outside. Okay, so but they, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Okay, I know you think you're dropping knowledge, but you're not really saying anything. <laughs> okay. They cannot give you anything. The culture. What is the what does that mean? Men are very logical. And so what yeah. what is a black man going to get from a black woman that he can't get from these other women? You're saying the culture. What does that mean? Well, you know what? I just saw a video today and it was for a rapper and it was on um vogue.com. And I don't give a damn about a rapper over here. I'm talking about, I don't <laughs> care about athletes. No, ma'am. I don't care about athletes. No, 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 he, no, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Understand. Those people don't live our lives. That's why I don't talk about them. I talk about, yeah. I'm talking about athletes, entertainers, or, or famous people. Talk about regular us. And see what you're, what you're, what you're telling me is black men should stick with black women for the sake of blackness. Well, yeah. Well, but 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 what do black men want from their women? They want to raise What do they want good, from their women? They want they want to raise good black children and they need to have that from no, their No, no, no. You skipped all the way to the kids. I'll okay. ask again. What do black men want from their women? They want good black women who will who will be their women who will who will do what what they need their women to do and do okay cooperation yes cooperation are black women known to be cooperative they are in not. mass okay <laughs> so black women so black men want cooperation i agree Yes. You as a black woman just said black women are not known to be cooperative. Yeah. We okay, are, so we that's are one thing that argumentative. So that's if, true. if men want cooperation, they cannot get it from black women, according to you. Okay, well, you know what? Not from every black woman. Okay, there man, well, are but some okay, black okay, women okay, again, man, again, I, 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 see, that's, see, we were doing so good. And now you're gonna to try to go into the not all, no Walt, no ma'am. Let's stick in the let's stick in the in the general. In general. Okay. In general. So you can't get cooperation. Okay. What else do what else do black men want from from women? Uh they they want natural beauty. Okay. And part of that is fitness. Fitness, yes. Fitness, natural okay. so, beauty. So let me natural. let me ask you a question. Okay. Are you aware? What percentage of black women are overweight? Uh gosh. Even even my son said that he sees a whole bunch of what, fat per, black what women. What percentage? What percentage? A hundred percent. What percent? Uh, uh, probably about eighty percent. Yep. Yeah. So if eight out of ten or eighty out of one hundred black women are. <laughs> If that. they are overweight and according <laughs> to you they are not cooperative they're not cooperative so they're, they're so, overweight so if the, those are the two things they say they want and they can't get them tell me why you're telling me why so basically what you're coming down to is your argument is just do it for blackness you know get, no, 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 man. Listen to what I'm about to say. What your argument was is an impassioned argument. Do it for the sake of blackness. Just do it for the blackness. Now, you're not going to get what you want. You're not going to get cooperative because we're not known for that. We're known for being the opposite of cooperative. Even, and you know listen, what? listen, listen. And <laughs> you're not going to get fit because 80% of us are overweight. Even my son says that. So you're basically telling black men you shouldn't get what you want. So you would tell your son that you raised Kept out of trouble, kept out of jail, kept out of prison, kept out of, out of the cemetery. You would tell him to go get a woman and spend the rest of his life with a woman who is not giving him what he wants. Jeez. You know, when you put it like that. Well, that's the way I needed to put it, because if I just put it out in there with, with men and women, <laughs> you could argue it. But when it's your son, when it's your brother, then it gets real. Yes. And you yes, would tell, me, you would tell and you would say you, you would tell your boy to go get a woman. If he said, "Mama, I looked high and low, and they all they're uncooperative and they're not fit," what would you tell him to to just not get anything? Uh, 
Okay, you know, that is a really good question. Exactly. Um, and this is the question you, your son and so many brothers are struggling with because they like black women, but they can't, they don't get even the basic stuff. And oh you my God. Well, you, I want my son to be with a black woman. Well, but, but, okay, but here's, what, here's what's going to happen. a black woman. But here's what's going to have to happen then. I'll tell you what's going to have to happen. You ready? Okay. Black mothers like you are going to have to start talking to black mothers of black daughters and start fixing that shit. Black women like you are going to have to start getting, making an understanding that fathers need to be in these houses because if not, you start getting the, the daughters that are, are, are produced with no supervision because you know good and well, you can't go to a black woman and say nothing to her about her daughter. She ready to fight you. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So That's I'm not, true. so I'm not saying it to be hurtful. What I'm saying it to is, is to let women understand that when you talk about men and women, it's easy, but when you got a son or, or a brother, it's like, well, wait a minute. They shouldn't survive the, the, the madness of being a black man in this country to only deal with a woman who off the rip ain't going to be cooperative and ain't going to even try to be fit for him. You know, I don't want to see that type of daughter-in-law. Exactly. <laughs> and then what about the other one? You know, cause single was the only other compulsion. And then, you know, I'm not going to even start throwing the subject, but you do know most of the kids here are born out of wedlock. So, you know, that's also a factor too, the older you get. So that's why I did this subject, not to trigger, but just to get women like yourself to, to think about it. And you came in like, no, they should stay. But now you're like, well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> See? Well, you know, I, I have a son and a daughter to raise, and I want to get the best and matches for them. But I honestly called in to talk about me. But, huh? yeah, huh? I, I do need to think about what's going well, how on is your daughter? with my children i have a i have a seven-year-old daughter and a, and a nine-year-old son where's your where's your where's the father uh my my husband is deceased he he okay. died at 39 okay well uh a solid male role model because daughters need fathers and sons need they fathers do, but so, i've been i've been watching your show for a minute and i'm feeling like it's i it's over for me i'm not I'm necessarily no, and see I, and see that's the thing that this that's a different show but no but there's there's a solution for single mothers that don't that don't necessarily exist for others that there's a solution for that too but i don't want to get de i don't want to get derailed on that tonight but Main thing is pour resources into your son because guess what? The community is built by men. And right now we're not producing the, we need to produce more competitive men. Well, you know, I'm, I'm in Georgia and I've been thinking about sending my son to a military school um, just to help him to get the, the type of guidance that he needs that I know that I can't really give him. I would say that's and a good idea. I would say you would. Good. Yep. Wow. Would. All right, Nandi, I'm I'm gonna let you go. I got some more people coming in. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah, that's how we have a phone call. Uh, look here. Uh, I'm not talking to men. It says ladies join in. I'm not talking to you guys. Got nothing to say to you guys on this topic. I want to hear what the women have to say. See what just happened when I talked to a woman and we had have a conversation. Guys, let me do what I do, please. Is this who I think it is? Adrian, unmute yourself, please. Are you out? Is it Philadelphia? Yes. <laughs> what do you want, woman? I know Hi. you're going to tell me the black men need to stay with black women, but you ain't going to be able to make this case. <laughs> okay, so you're right. I'm not going to be able to make this one anymore. I feel like I've been trying to argue that, you know, <laughs> black men and black women, but I feel like sisters, y'all are out here making us look bad. Well, um, I don't I don't want see here's what I don't want. I don't want to take hope. But I do want to raise awareness. And in order to raise awareness, sometimes it has to sting a little bit. Right. Because you have a, you have a, you have children, right? One, yes. Is it a boy or a girl? A girl. Okay. And uh, you have a brother. Oh, that's right. Your brother married out. 
Yes. Okay, well. <sighs> uh, maybe I'll do a show following up how we could address this and how we could fix it. Because like I said, I don't want to take all hope. Um, but I'm glad you can kind of start to see where men are coming from in this position. I can. Um, I don't know if you saw um, today earlier on The Real, uh, Jeannie Mai, who is dating Jeezy. I know you say you don't deal with uh, the rappers and stuff no, like that. No, but, but... I, The Real is in my kind of sector. So what happened? So they were talking about being submissive. Uh-oh. Was Bonnie <laughs> Love on the panel? Say that again? Was yes, we... she was. Oh, here we go. go ahead. And um, the other new the new the new woman she's black as well okay. and adrian um garcelle something so when Jeannie said that she's for she thinks that women should be submissive to men and that um she she's okay with going out into the world working and leading in her life and then coming home and being submissive to her partner Ooh, jesus christ mm. <laughs> go yeah. ahead the ladies on the reel did not agree. They did not necessarily, they did not agree at all. They just felt like it should be equal. It should be equal, everything. And um, mm -hmm. it shouldn't, it shouldn't not. Well, I guess in a world where we're talking about um, a high value man and him like supporting you and paying your bills, I don't think that's a realistic thing to ask for things to be equal. Is he going to respect you? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's giving if you're in a relationship, I feel like. But equal, no, it's not going to be equal you know if what? he's working. I'm, I'm going to check this out because that's a, I see what you're talking about. Uh, and I need to do a little bit more work on that one. Uh, but did you have anything you want to add on to the topic? Because I have three more people before we cycle on out. Oh, no, I just wanted to uh, tell uh, you about that show. So okay, appreciate it. it. Shout out to Philly. I was in your town last week. Philly's crazy. Hey. <laughs> Peace out, sis. Bye. All right, so uh, uh oh, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to hang you up. Um, to do do do, you're on top. Um, Tani, uh, there we go. Tanish, go ahead. I don't want to mispronounce your Tina. How do I pronounce your name? Tinashe. 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 How are you? So, should competitive, high value, or successful men marry out? I believe they can. Ah, I know, I, I know they can. I'm asking, should they? Well, it's not a matter of should, because you can't really tell somebody that they have to do something. It's all about the will, and it's all about the attraction that you have for somebody else. You know why I'm asking whether or not they should? I get that I, I get that I only can control me, but the way you're framing the question, it, it, <laughs> the way I'm, where you're framing it, it's, it's like, uh. Well, you can you can exercise the option if you want to. Um, right. If they don't, what's the option? If they don't marry out, mm -hmm. do they have? Okay, how about this? Do competitive, successful, high value black men have equal amount of black female options as non black female options? Yes, they do. Oh, they do. So you're yes. saying the numbers are the same? <laughs> really? Yes, they do. And I, mm. can I why? go ahead. I got to hear this. Okay. <laughs> I'm new to this channel. So um, bear with me. But I want to say this. I feel I know that the media portrays numbers in such a propagandic way that we're not doing at all. Well, you know what? I don't use media. I use blackdemographics.com, black statistics by, for black people, mm -hmm. by black people taken by black people, analyzed by black people. Right. So I, I just want to say that, yes, they do have, they do have options to marry the black woman. I am from Africa. Okay. That whole continent is filled with so many okay, black but, women. But ma'am, we're in the United States. So, I mean, I, due respect, yeah. I don't really want to try to play the uh, pan-African thing. People are here talking about mm -hmm. people who can't afford to go to the continent to go dating. Here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're trying to say that black men who are successful, competitive, or high value have mm -hmm. a a plethora of black women to choose from. 
They do. Okay. Then what would you say to all of the black women on the show tonight who say completely different? Well, not only did they say they didn't, they have sons Mm -hmm. and they have brothers Mm -hmm. who have had to do this because they can't find what you were saying is in ready supply. Okay. I would tell them this. You have one of your videos where you talked about being in the right place. You have also talked about working on yourself to make yourself accessible to that type of man that you are looking for. You work on yourself. You put your best self out there. You work on your physical. You work on your attitude as well. And you will get to that person or you will get to that No, no. See, I understand what I've told women to do. Right. But we got to start with the... Okay, let's st- let's start here. Okay. Men want basically three things from women. Cooperation, mm-hmm. fitness, mm-hmm. and single. Yes. Are black women in general thought to be cooperative? They are perceived as not being no, cooperative. No, I'm not okay, ma'am. No, I'm not I can't do the perceived thing because what you're doing, ma'am, is not being you Okay. Okay. I'll answer your question. Well, I mean, no. let's be re- no, Okay, because it's not perception. You got. Right. I don't need no man. I'm a strong, independent black woman. Black women play the sapphire thing up, and it's not a media construction. Mm-hmm. I, I, if and if you say it is, I'm going to say that all I have to do is walk out on the streets of New York City, Philadelphia, Atlanta, with a camera, and I can show you any given day. Right. Okay. So if they're in, in general, they're not perceived as being cooperative. That's one thing that men want that black women in general are not known for. Mm-hmm. What about fitness? They are not known for that either. Um, may I make a point? Okay, after I make my point. So okay. two of the three, two of the three things right. they don't have. Right. So where is the where are these large numbers of available women? Okay. Is it my turn now? But if you answer me, you can't, but you can't, the math doesn't add up, ma'am. You're just telling me that there are a lot of women out there. You just got to go to the right places. And I'm saying mm-hmm. two of the three things that men want don't exist. And you just want to act like that didn't happen. I'm not really acting like it didn't happen. I just want to point out that there are women like myself and like some other women that I know, black women that are into being fit, uh-huh. that are into being cooperative, that are into being submissive to be a man. Uh-huh. And maybe those numbers are not adding up to the statistics that you see. That's just what I want to point out that they- well, you want to go back to the anecdotal mm-hmm. with you and the people you know. I get it, but that does not work for the for the population. The whole population, I get it. And I okay. get it. And so how old are you? I am 36. Where's your husband? I am single. Where's your fiance? I'm not engaged at all. My fiance passed away. Okay. So why aren't you married? Because he passed away last year. Sorry to hear that. That's all right. But you get what I'm saying. I do. I know you see what I gather is many women who come to this conversation, no disrespect are rather innumerate not really versed on the numbers and then so quick to throw numbers out as being white supremacy or media construct constructed propaganda. And that's simply not true. Right. You can go out and see with your own eyes. Are you familiar with Spelman college, black college? I I am. Huh? I am. Okay. Spelman college, all female college, black college scrapped their entire athletics department and to take all that money to put it into student body health for women because the chancellor, the the president of the school realized that young black women were coming to college at 18 years old, overweight and obese. Mm. Ma'am, we cannot act like there's a, what you're saying is true, that there are just a plethora of fit, cooperative and single black women. Right. And I agree with you. There is that population as well. And it is the vast majority of the percentage of the black women. And like you asked me, what would I say to them? 
would be to take accountability. Well, I, I thank you for saying that. But before you can do that, you have to agree with what I said, because you came on and said, I'm wrong. You said there are plenty of women. And then five minutes later, you're saying they're not enough and they need to take accountability. So that I don't see how you square that circle. What I would need from women like yourself is to, mm -hmm. to understand the reality that men are seeing. And whether you like it or not, just accept that men are not going to accept women who are not cooperative and not fit. And without black families, you can't have black nothing. And black men aren't going to accept it. And Can I ask you a question? Go, go ahead. Um, do you align cooperative with being submissive? No. I don't okay. even talk in submissive yet. Got Co it. Cooperation just, just means you're easy to get along with. And, mm -hmm. and you know, submissive is something completely different. Submissive is a whole nother character, a whole nother conversation. But thank you for getting on, man. I'm a little bit late. Appreciate you. No problem. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Yes. See, I've learned how to get around that submissive thing. Um, Mia. Mia, oh my, oh, shop like a gyro. Hello. So should competitive, successful, or high value men marry out? I definitely think they should mm. because um, the people that are around you, that are in proximity to you matter. Um, you, you definitely reference a lot of different data points that support and justify the notion that they should date out. Um, however, I guess some women that miss their mark, if they try to date men that were like the concentration of, I guess, high value men or Henry's or, Hit squad men, if the concentration of those men are not, I guess, high um, mm -hmm. sometimes. And then, and then also when you don't grow up with a father or someone to help you vet, then that also is a factor that can go against you, like mm -hmm. your family and your background. So in me, in my case, I don't, you know, have children or, you know, things like that. I mean, I know what I need to work on. I know where I rank. Okay. Um, however, um, I would say like when I was 21, I dated, you know, I, I thought I dated pretty well-to-do brothers, mm -hmm. um, that I felt that were going places. I really didn't want to date older, mm -hmm. but I realized that that probably was a solution that I had to go to because of the men that were in proximity to me. Right. Right. the people who I was exposed to. So, I mean, I experienced some younger men that wasted my time. Um, and, and I really didn't understand, I guess, what men wanted, I guess, because I was really into fitness and um, the FBI, you know, I was right. really into that. However, you know, the men that were in proximity to me, they do value thick, <laughs> women right. like well the more ratchet like i see a lot of ratchet women honestly like i, I see a lot of ratchet women um so if that's not what so if that's not if that's not what you want to, well proximity does matter i think more i think something that matters more than anything else is just awareness we have gotten so far to the point to where we, we it has been become so skewed that thick and fine uh -huh. and da -da -da -da, all this other stuff to where women uh, honestly can be allowed to kind of go astray, which we got to kind of pull the thing back on track and say it is important. And here's the thing. It's not just about being rich or high value. I'm talking about men who are just above average earners. Right. You know, regular blue collar guys, white collar guys, we're not asking for masters of the universe. And, the, and when I say that, they just want women who are fit and 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 cooperative. That's 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 a new thing to hear for a lot of women. So, I think it's you know important for women to hear this because I would tell you this: most men don't want to marry out. Black men in mass would prefer to be with black women. See, that's what I don't mm -hmm. want to get lost at. That, that you know, like uh, the guy who came on earlier to talk to his sister, he came to her kind of like messed up about it because 
brothers would prefer to be with sisters. But right. I got to I got to get on to the next call. We're getting we're getting late, sis. Appreciate it. All right, no problem. Yeah, I want to get clear, ladies, that I'm not saying that hey, you need to be successful, competitive, and marry up. Brothers want to be with sisters, but are you giving them what they want? You got to give men what they want, just like men got to give women what they want. Uh, unmute yourself. Two, two nine, whatever this is. Uh, mute yourself. Hello. First name. Uh, you need to mute the YouTube channel in the background. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> okay. You still, you still got it, it going on yes, in the sir. background. You Can you hear me it. now? Go ahead. So, Cirilla. So, um, should high value or successful or competitive men marry out? Well, yes, I, I believe so. Of course. Um, and then again, the lady that called before her just got off the phone. I was like, black men, black men need to stay with black women. So, you know, that was my point of it. They need to stay with black women. Yes, I think black okay, women. You still have you, you, need still, to you still have YouTube playing in the background. You need, okay, you got to turn it off. I got to go into the next call because it's, it's it give me. Fear. Wait, I got something to tell you. It's very important. But no, you got to turn that off. Oh well, this lady. You ain't gonna just you ain't gonna just oh well me now. I told you, you gotta turn it off. Three oh one. Hello. Hi, your first name. Tiffany. Should successful, competitive, or high value men marry out? That's the question on the table. What you got? Now is this um, generally speaking, like all men, or is it just black men? Well, black men is where the subject matter is, so stick with black men. Go ahead. Um, I think they should, but equally, I think black women who are high value as well should date out. Okay. Too. All right. Um, why did you feel the need to inject that part? Well, because it's like if high value black men are going to date out, then what's left for high value black women? Well, so well let me stop you. Right, women, let me stop you right. Let me answer the question. First off, those sure. two things those two things aren't equal. Because last night I had a okay. show it says, "Do women really have the options they think they have?" And most women feel like they're high value, but I would tell you this. Most women who think they're high value are not. And even if they are, they don't have the options they believe they have. So it's not a one to one relationship. It's not like you have 10 high value black men, 10 high value uh, uh, black women and 10 high value black men marry out and 10 high value black women marry out. That's not the numbers. It doesn't work that way. Well, I think that's a matter of opinion. I really no, think it's not a matter is. of opinion. It's a matter of fact. The numbers say it is. Um, again, I think it's a matter of opinion. And if black high value men want to date out, want to marry out, it's marrying out, then marrying I, out. It's mar- not, mar- if they I, want to marry out, if they want to marry out, then they should. They they should do whatever they feel, whatever makes them happy. Okay, but you but, wanted to bring in you, know, you wanted to bring in the women part though. That's what you wanted. I do. To bring. I Why? Do. Well, well, I the do thing is, but but the thing, but hold on, but you're not going to over talk. I'll have the conversation. But you seem to believe that. A black woman who, what makes a woman high value in your opinion? Um, her background, her level of education, mm-hmm. her health, her mm-hmm. mentally and um, physically. I think that's what makes a high value woman. Um, woman. Are you one of those women? I am. How tall are you? I am. I'm educated. How tall are you? Again. How tall are you? I am five. I am five four. Dress size? Say that again. Your dress size? My dress size, I wear size six. Okay. How much did you weigh the last time you weighed yourself? I weigh 135. Okay. Uh, do most so black, small. so do, what percentage of black women uh, weigh what you weigh or less? 
Well, I would have to check that, but I don't have that data in front Just of me. Just guess. Out of 100%, would what would guess you get? Like at least out of 100%, mm-hmm. I would say probably like mm, 30 to 40%. We come in different shapes and sizes. Nope, less than 20%. 80%, less than 20%? Okay. 80%, 80% of black women are overweight and obese. And there's one thing that is known. The higher up women go in education and income, the weight tends to increase as well. Well, do you include the percentage of obesity amongst white women? I Asian don't care. We're, not, we're, only, we're only talking about black. So, no, no, no. Think- hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, ma'am. I'm taking the conversation. Is you, you can't shift it to white women when it suits you. See, if you want to say that high mm-hmm. value black women have options to marry out, then I need to then where are the high value where are these high value black women's weddings? Because there are lots of channels talking about that just should mating and dating, but you don't see any of these women with men. Well, may I speak? Yes. I think it's very aggressive just to isolate black women and well, say that they have no all viable right. I don't see what you're not gonna do this thing aggressive. I don't play these word games, man. It's, I'm a, it's a man's talk show. I've allowed you to speak. You're not going to use the shaming language here, ma'am. I speak in facts. Data it's not one. shaming. All I right, think, ma'am. Facts I think are it's not very shaming. aggressive. And black women, no, it's not a fact. I don't know where you think that works, but let's try this again. Like I said, you're not going to over talk me. So if you want to have the conversation, we can have the conversation. But I will aggressively mute you if you try to overtalk me. Are we clear? Did you hear what well, I did? You um, hear? I did. I, I just I said did. I can't. You don't I, want me to. Okay. I'm, I'm saying I'm running a talk show, ma'am. And when I'm talking sure. and talking, it's bad for the viewers. So, with right. respect, when I start speaking, it's not like having a conversation in person. I'm running a show. So it's not being right. aggressive. See, that that kind of, anyway, I don't want to go down that path. Um, how old are you? I'm actually 27. 27. What's your husband's name? My husband, I'm not married yet, but I do, I am in a relationship. Uh, how long have you guys been engaged? Um, for like... Three months now. Three months? Congratulations. Yeah. Where did he propose to you? Thank you. When did he propose to me? Where? Well, we were actually at a, we were actually at a family gathering Mm -hmm. when he did it. So it's, it's kind of like COVID. So we can't do much. (laughs) So when are you guys planning on, when's the wedding date? Well, we're trying to shoot for next year, but it all depends on the whole COVID thing. But he's actually not American. So. Okay. And what does what does your husband do? Your fiance. My husband is an engineer. Ah, your fiance is an engineer. Yeah. And what do you do? What do I do? I'm actually I work at NIH. Um, so I'm in the medical field. So. If we believe everything you say, what percentage of black women have the same experience that you have? A lot. I just don't think they're a lot. No, ma'am, you can't just no, no. See what? No, now see, we were doing so well until you came out with this. A lot, but it's just not publicized. Yes, there's a secret underground movement to keep high value black women who are successfully marrying out a closely guarded state secret. It is getting out my. Yeah, it's a closely guarded state secret. Gotta keep them a pr- <laughs> God damn. Woo! You just can't make this shit up, man. Can't make it up. Cannot make it up. Cannot make it up. Even try to go down the path and you're still going to get some irrational delusion. Good luck with that. Closely guarded state secret. All right. So um, as it stands right now, I will say to the final caller, go back and listen to the show. You're outnumbered drastically by black women with black sons and black brothers. Um, But if you think the government 
and white supremacy and white media and everybody is secretly holding all the swirling stats to keep you sisters on the plantation and and blackistan with whoever whatever the, what do you what do these people talk about man anyway all right well here's what we're gonna do shows it's late i got stuff to do this was a good show this was a good show i think things went the way i think things went very well yeah she was lying exactly right <laughs> you know, I, oh she went from having a boyfriend to a fiance to a husband all in one thing what's your husband do i'm not married What's your fiance? Uh, yeah. How long have you been engaged? This long? Where do you propose? Uh, so what's your husband do? Well, my husband is... <laughs> See how quick... Her boyfriend to no husband to fiance to circle all the way back to husband in inside of four sentences. I'm too good at this. I'm cold with this logic. <laughs> I ain't even giving a salute, man. She don't even deserve it. All right, then. Shout out to Ike. Shout out to the crew. Everybody appreciate calling in. Uh, it's going on a quarter one. Let's see. Oh, damn. Look at you. No, fine. I'm sure. Shout out to uh, Andre. Keep telling the truth. Appreciate it, fam. We got to give you the, the bomb. Man, look here. I want to do a follow-up call to this because, like I said, I don't want to take hope, but I do want to... Don't want to take hope, but I do want to raise awareness. And here's what I need from women, black women in particular, who would have different or who would have better. I need your awareness to be high and I need your sense of urgency to be now. Sense of urgency. Like I said yesterday, I'm looking up and down Park Avenue and little white women are running like. You look up and down Park Avenue, they're going. They're trying to keep them Park Avenue addresses. Got to keep this size for a dress. I mean, running. Little, I mean, young ones, middle-aged ones, old ones. You saw one woman with a cane running. <laughs> oh, oh, she waddling. I got, got to keep it down. Got to keep it down. Somebody gave me a thimble of water and some wheatgrass. That's right. All men are asking for is cooperative and fit. The submission and all that other stuff, that comes way later. All right. Thank you to the shout out to the CIA. One love to the FBI. Thank you guys. We got another show we're going to do this week. It's Fridays tomorrow. Uh, I may even do a show uh, over the weekend, depending on what's going on. Godfather live and direct here from New York City. Appreciate you guys to show it up tonight. We ran a little bit long, but as usual, peace. We are gone
Nothing can stop me. Eden so says, Black women are at their best when they're fit, life. beautifully inside and outside, Real with all the actions allowing nurturing to benefit. Shout out. Shout out to Antoine Wade, new member. Shout out to O'Cliff. Big Ike. Dynasty, keep doing your thing, Kev. Turn on, John. I make 240 I make 240k CNA San Diego 4% of black women five is left he said he might have to he said he loved melanated women he might have to date out hey man ladies you get competitive competitive make yourself known you can clean up that's what the opportunity is you can get competitive Raise your value as pretty as possible. Ladies, you can clean up. Your competition is sleeping. That's what I'm saying. Till next time.